Hello everybody, this is HG Shapes here. I'm back with another video. Um, today I have a couple basically brand new uh, products that I'm very excited to talk to you about and uh, hope everybody's doing okay. We had a glimpse at some real fall weather this week. Got down to the low 40s at night here, which was uh, quite the surprise. Um, but it looks like this week is going to be warming back up a bit and I, I'm not complaining about that either. So, um, why don't we start with the soap for today? And this is uh, Soliski Soap's Internal Calamity. Um, obviously, I don't have the proper tub because I split this uh, soap with a friend. Thank you. Uh, you know who you are. And why don't I just go ahead and show you the actual label here? So, a very cool label that sort of plays on that famous painting. I believe it's called The Scream. And I love how he's got his lather and his razor and his brush. Um, I think it's a very creative um, use of that painting. So to talk to you about this soap here, uh, and actually, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Soliski. So uh, he's based in Western Pennsylvania, I believe, kind of near Pittsburgh. And he's been making soaps for a while now. Um, he makes all kinds of um, soap. Um, Coming out with a face cream here pretty soon, make shampoo bars, bath bars, all that kind of stuff. Um, pretty uh, impressive, you know, collection of things that he makes, in my opinion. And he recently made big steps toward reformulating his uh, shaving soap base. Uh, he worked on it for quite a while, and from what he told me, he consulted with some uh, cosmetic. Uh, chemist. He he himself is a scientist by trade, but I believe he's a geologist. Um, so he consulted with some chemists and really put his uh, heart and soul into this. And what uh, you have is the new soap base here. So um, it's a pretty firm soap. Uh, it's certainly gotten a little bit, you know, you can make an indent like that, but I would say compared to most of the other artisan soaps that are out right now, this is uh, considerably firmer. And um, I think now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the full list of ingredients and scent notes because this is a kind of complex vegan soap recipe that uh, maybe you would like to see. So I'm gonna show it to you now. So as you can see, it's a vegan soap uh, formula, as I said. Uh, he notes that he was able to take out coconut oil which in small quantities is very common in um, soap bases, you know, old soap bases, new soap bases, but too much of it, and um, it can be overly drying in use. And I think a lot of us have maybe experienced that with um, some of the older soap bases that are just like all coconut oil. Uh, it can definitely be too much of that thing. And uh, he mentions how a couple of the acids that he included act as a sort of substitute for lanolin with the soap. Uh, of course, lanolin is not vegan, but um, additionally, some people are allergic to lanolin. And so I think it's great that he found a sort of uh, vegan substitute for that. So uh, about the scent now, uh, he said that he started with the note Apopanix. No idea how you say that. Uh, I read that that's supposed to be something like Myr, M-Y-R-R-H, which is maybe some kind of resin. Um, and then other than that, it's got, you know, bergamot, oak moss, labdanum, things like that, fur. And to be honest, I don't know what any of that is supposed to really smell like, uh, except for the oak moss and bergamot. But when I put my nose in this tub, there's, there's a ton of bergamot um, on top. And then below that, uh, I can't pick out much else. It's, it's kind of a sweet, herbal spicy, a little bit of foil, really, really well blended scent. And um, yeah, I, I, this is a terrific, terrific scent. I think it's more suited for maybe the fall weather, but definitely something you could wear uh, and use year round. Um, yeah, this is a really nice scent and I'll talk more about the soap base as we get into it. Um, and so secondly, the other exciting thing that I have uh, that I'm borrowing at the moment is this Dogwood Handcrafts <laughs> Brush in a Brush Declaration Grooming B10. 
So this brush was uh, raffled off as a part of um, a uh, sort of charity raffle that Scott of Declaration Grooming did and a number of other artisans of the community like Dogwood Handcrafts and Mammoth Soaps, people like that. They contributed various things. And so um, one of the kind people in the community uh, has been loaning this brush out to a couple of us. And so I want to say thank you to him um, for giving me the opportunity to try this. And um, this handle is just really striking. Um, I remember when I saw the original pictures of this, I kind of thought to myself, well, is that a little, how should we say, trite? You know, is it a little bit uh, a little bit too cheeky on uh, the way that it looks? But it's actually a really, really well done brush in every way. I mean, this resin up here is beautiful and finished super, super well. Um, you know, the brush thing in the bottom is kind of cool and the handle shape itself is really fantastic. So just a quick shout out to um, Dogwood and all the great work that they do. In terms of the knot here, this is what it looks like when it's dry. So this uh, B10 batch is advertised from Scott as being the softest, jelliest batch he's ever experienced. And I can attest that out of the decoration knots that I've used, I've used B4, B6, 7, 8, 9A, oh, 3, 2. Um, yeah, this is pretty jelly. And you can see here on the outside how the tips have gotten really, really crispy. And even in the middle, too. Um, and crispy can imply, I mean, in my experience, when you have tips this crispy, it means that the brush is going to be pretty jelly. Um, 28 millimeter knot. Because of the tips and the way that they feel, there is less backbone in this brush compared to others uh, that uh, Declaration makes. And so I do appreciate that part of it. Um, let me drop it in the water for just a sec and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, let me get a little more wet. Um, once you have just a little bit of water in it, it really starts to open up like that and clump together. And um, yeah, so this is a really jelly, really soft, all of that uh, kind of knot. And um, yeah, with that said, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get into the lathering process. Um, I'm going to let this uh, brush soak for maybe a minute and then I'll start loading off the tub. So, all right, we're back after a pretty long load off the uh, tub here and uh, we're going to work into a face lather. Um, something that I noticed with the Soliski base um, is that you can't really shortcut the water. Um, you kind of have to add it slowly and steadily. And when I spoke with Soliski directly, he kind of said, yeah, that's the way it is. Um, so let me talk to you about the brush a little bit more. Uh, Splay is really easy, obviously, as you can see. Um, and um, it just, you you don't feel anything <laughs> when, you, when you splay the brush like that. Um, I mean, you feel some things, right? But it's like, there's no... There's no scritz, there's not even scrub really. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't even classify that feeling as being uh, scrubby or anything like that. So, you know, I've, I, I mentioned in my video last week, um, gel is not the most important characteristic to me in a brush. There are other um, aspects that concern me more and I would rather have um, no gel whatsoever in a brush than too much gel. And I don't think this brush has too much gel, but it's close, you know. Um, you know, if it's being advertised as the jelliest thing that Scott of Declaration Grooming has ever seen, then of course it's gonna have a good amount of gel. Um, to compare it to the other batches that I've tried out, this is most similar to my uh, B8. That I, that was actually my first um, declaration knot that I ever got. Um, so back to the soap. Um, it does start to get a little bit more of a sheen to it when you start to, you know, really work in the water. However. This soap base, in addition to having kind of a unique set of ingredients, um, given our standards, I feel like it also has a unique face feel. 
and that it really feels like it's bonding with your skin and is really giving you a lot of protection. Um, even when you start to, you know, add water to it, it just really kind of holds to the skin. And I should say that, you know, it doesn't really ever puff up, you know, the, the lather, uh, yeah, the, the lather doesn't puff up. It stays pretty low and kind of attached to your face like this, um, which I don't think is good or bad or ugly compared to other soaps out there, but it's just different. And so I, I really do feel like you can feel um, how the different ingredients in the soap, um, how they transfer into your lather and not just like reading them on the label, oh, these look different, but you can actually sense um, how they're working differently for you. So I'm gonna keep uh, working this around um, and I'll bring you back in just a sec. All right, we're gonna start with pass number one with the above the tie S1 slant razor uh, with Gillette Silver Blue, third use. So even though you have to add water kind of steadily to the soap to get it to work up, in my opinion. I wouldn't call this a necessarily thirsty soap either. So, you know, there are some bases out there and they're kind of few and far between, but there are still some where um, You know, you need a lot of water to get it to work up and you have to add the water in small increments. The scent has Pretty much stayed the same. Um, just maybe open up a little bit, but I also think one of the nice things about this vegan base is perhaps, I mean, I have a theory and someone like Saliski could correct me if I'm wrong on this, but um, because this is a vegan soap, there isn't a bunch of animal products in it like there is with Sierra, which is on my mind because I used it last week. I would think that it, there's not going to be as much of a base funk, you know, coming out of the tub to interfere with the scent. But who knows? Um, maybe these vegan butters are just as smelly as donkey milk is. I don't know. Working with two days growth here as usual. Brilliant. Um, that felt very nice that first pass and I'm going to rinse and uh, come back for pass number two. All right, loading up for pass number two. And I found this week that 
the second pass lather is even better than the first. You know, it seems like this base really benefits from kind of settling down a bit and having a few minutes to sit in the brush. Um, I think the sheen, the sheen to this lather is fantastic. Um, it's a, again, it's a little bit different looking than like a typical tallow kind of soap, um, but there's still a, a sheen to this, which is great. So um, let me dry my hands here and we'll go um, for a second pass um, across and against the grain. All right, nice two pass shave. Um, the slickness in some spots um, was pretty crazy, I think. Like, really, really, really good. And um, the protection was always there. You know, with a new soap base, you'd rather always have, well, I, I guess really any soap base, you'd rather have too much protection than not enough, um, right? And the post shave feel uh, is also felt like really, really good. Um, I don't know if he, Wanted to improve that specifically. Seems like everybody's trying to improve that right now. But um, anyway, yeah, it feels really great, and I definitely could forego my aftershave. But I have a tester that I've been trying out for a friend, and so I've been kind of uh, ruining the post shave by putting on some alcohol. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and rinse, and I'm going to put on that uh, alcohol, and I'll give you a recap here in just a sec. We've got our aftershave tester here from an anonymous uh, buddy. And um, just to talk to you about it, even though you don't know who it is, um, a little more. So this formula is an attempt to um, left a little too much water on my face, but that's okay. Um, it's an attempt to not include uh, as much alcohol in the splash formula to sort of try and match the current artisan trend of using a bit less alcohol in the aftershave splashes compared to other ingredients. Um, and as a result, when I just applied that, I felt very little stinging, um, if any, really, um, which you know speaks to not my stellar technique, but um, the fact that there's not that much alcohol in there. So it gets a good marks from me on that, and the scent is kind of a, complex tobacco sort of thing, which pairs nicely with the scent of internal uh, internal calamity, in my opinion. So let's do a final quick recap about the soap and the brush. So here it is. Go get it. Why not? I um, should say that this retails for 16 bucks for a tub of that stuff, which by modern artisan standards is a bargain. <laughs> and um, yeah, just uh, I think Siliski's done you know, he's put in a lot of time, a lot of effort to get this base going, and um, a lot of us are really liking it. So if you haven't heard of it, you haven't um, tried it out already, I would encourage you to do so. And as of the time of this recording, I don't think you can get B10 anymore. I believe it's out of stock on Declaration sites. Now, that doesn't mean that he'll be out of it forever. Sometimes uh, things will, you know, magically come back um, in the Declaration world. So... Anyway, it was a real pleasure to use this brush this week, and um, if, you know, I had the opportunity to own one of these, I think I definitely would. 
Um, but I'm going to be sending it uh, on to the next person now. So that's what I'll be doing. And with that, um, this concludes our slant lineup. This was my third week in a row using four different slants. And then next week, I think I'm going to do a comparison. And um, Next week, I'm going to finally get to some vintage soap and aftershave, which I've been meaning to use for a couple weeks and just things have gotten pushed ahead of it in the queue. So we'll do some vintage stuff uh, next week, which will be great. So with all that said, um, let me know your thoughts, questions, comments. Um, have you used Soliski stuff before? Things like that. And um, yeah, for that, this has been HT Shaves. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.